guards because they thought the disciples would come and get them, right? So that brings us to our story today. And I told you that's not the end. When I got back to my seat, do you know what John Thomas said to me? He said, Mom, I didn't like that story today. It was just too sad. And I said, wait, John Thomas, because it gets so much better. Because today, Mary comes to the tomb, and she sees that the stone is not there anymore. And she said, what, what, what do I need to do? So she ran, and she got the disciples. She got Peter, and she got John. Now, John was a little bit younger, so John got there first. And he went to the cave, and he went in, and he could see that what? What was in the, inside that tomb? In just his clothes. Nothing was there. And Peter ran in, and he saw that the cloth that had been covering their face, Jesus' face, was folded and put to the side. And the other clothes were to the side. But Jesus was not there. And they went back to their homes. And Mary was standing outside the tomb. The tomb was empty, just like this egg. She was standing there, and she was crying. And an angel appeared and said, Woman, why are you crying? And she said, They've moved Jesus. I don't know where he is. And as she stepped out, she, she was still crying. And someone said, Why are you crying? And she said, Please, if you've moved Jesus, will you tell me where his body is so that I may go bury him? And do you know, she thought it was a gardener. And do you know what that person said to her? He spoke her name. He said, Mary. And then she saw it was not a gardener. Who was it? It was Jesus. And she said, oh, Rabboni. And he said, I am not dead. I am ascending to the Father. Go and tell my disciples. So if you look at that cross behind you there, what's up there? Jesus, Jesus is not on that cross anymore, is he? He is alive. All that was left was that linen that draped across. Jesus is alive in this world. That's the miracle of Easter. That's the good news. Jesus is not dead. Do you think we could tell all these people out here that Jesus is alive? Can you tell them from the highest mountaintops? Can you shout it to them? I'm going to count to three. And in your best Easter voice, I want you to say, He's alive. Can you do it? All right. You got to tell them. You got to preach the word. Jesus told us to. You ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Isn't that the greatest news ever? Oh, I love it. Super job, guys. All right, well, I'm going to give you each an Easter egg, and inside it's empty except for a sticker that you can wear that says, He is not here, He is risen. So I'm going to pass it by real quick before we say our prayer and let you pick your favorite color egg. Do you want to pick your favorite color egg? Oh, green, I love it. Do y'all want to get? Grab you one. Just grab it, just grab one. Yes. You got the biggest one? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you want to get you an egg? All right. There's just too many to pick from, so many colors. And I want you today to try to remember to tell at least one person, if not half a million people, that Jesus is not dead, Jesus is not in that tomb, that Jesus is alive, and that Jesus loves you. All right. Has everybody got an egg? All right. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this Easter Sunday, for your precious children who are doing just what Jesus said and going and sharing the word. Thank you so much, Lord, that Jesus rose and he is alive in the world today. May we spread the message this day and all days. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. You want to give me a hug there, didn't you? Good morning. I love to greet our children with a little high five, and they kind of go, why does he do that? But then when you're not looking, they do it automatically. So that's a good thing. It's a gift this morning to go to our Lord in prayer. And before we do that, I want us to share prayer concerns. And so I will um, uh, walk down the center aisle, and I will look at you and ask you to share a prayer concern with me. This morning, what do we lift up to our God? Bill and Margaret Denny. Denny. Doris Doris McEwen family. Mary Kilo and family. What are our prayer concerns to lift up to our God? Katie Flawed. Katie f- <coughs> flawed. Men, and women in Men and women in uniform. A praise for our preacher. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. <laughs> she says something about the preacher. I'll let that go. Memory Parish. Memory Parish. Memory Parish. Thank you. Brooklyn Bale. Bill Miller. Betty Miller. Benny. Benny Miller. Thank you. I'm sorry. Leroy Pfeiffer. Leroy Pfeiffer. Ben Newberry. Ben Newberry. Don Glisson. James Larry Cornelius. James Larry Cornelius. William Drake and Patty Jackson. Vicky Kitchens. Andrea Roy. Let's prepare ourselves for prayer. God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun on this beautiful day, you have raised Jesus Christ from the dead and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all your gifts of new life around us and within us. Especially we thank you this day for all the victories over sin and evil in our lives. Help us, Lord, to live as your people in the world. Forgive us of our sins. Reveal to us our sin that's holding us back from you and not setting a good example in the world. We thank you, God, for the love of family and friends in the church. We are so blessed to live in a community such as this, filled with so much love. We're thankful to you for the coming of spring, for the, for the colors of the spring that proclaim your glory all over the world. We're thankful, Lord, for the continual witness of your church. Today we gather as people of faith, proclaiming our trust and love in our Lord. Help us to be even more faithful as your church, to proclaim the life-giving hope of Jesus Christ in the world. Lord, today hear our prayers for those whom we have lifted up, those who we have great concern for and great love for, those among us who are in need. You know all of our needs and you know what we need. Come to your people today, O Lord, and fill us with that for which we need. Your grace and your love and your hope and your peace and your son. For all that you have for us this day, for the joy of our salvation, for the hope of the empty tomb, for the excitement of this new life in Christ, we give you thanks and we give you our praise. And now hear the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Multiply these gifts in ways that we cannot fathom. Make them be for the world the very blessings that it needs. Amen. Today. I hope and pray that 
this worship experience is a blessing to you and that you're experiencing the presence of God with you. I want you to know that at this time in our service, our congregation is responding to the blessings of God by giving their tithes and their offerings to God, by giving a portion of those blessings back to the church that God has given them. And I want to invite you as a viewer to partner with us and to participate in the same opportunity that our church family is participating in. I want to invite you to consider being a contributor to the ministries of First United Methodist Church that we can uh, continue to do meaningful programming here at First United Methodist Church through the TV ministry and through the internet ministry into our community. If today is a blessing to you, I want to invite you to respond to God's blessings by considering prayerfully making a contribution to First United Methodist Church. May God bless you.
scripture this morning from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. I invite you to follow along or listen to the word of our God. <clears throat> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had, re- had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Last Easter, uh, uh, the day after Easter, Monday after Easter last year, uh, April 20th, I left on a spiritual pilgrimage to Spain to walk part of the Camino de Santiago, which is a, a, a long historical 500-mile trail uh, that people have walked for for. Many, 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 many years, thousands and thousands of people have walked this trail uh, to the bones of St. James in the cathedral in Santiago. And uh, so we got to walk 35 miles of this trail. And I had never been to Europe. I'd never been to Spain. And uh, so that was kind of a new thing. Uh, But something happened to me while I was in Spain. Here's what happened. I've traveled a lot. I've been a lot of places. And so I know what to look for. I know uh, what I see is, is what I'm looking for and what I'm looking at. But in, in uh, Spain, um, one of the clergy friends that went with us is a fellow named Eric Predmore. Eric Predmore is blind. And his dog Atlas, um, who by the way is also ordained, um, uh, his, his, his guide dog is also ordained, went with us. And um, I was one of the fastest walkers uh, on the trail whenever we went on the trail. But uh, Atlas was always going to be first. So Atlas is dragging Eric everywhere he went because Atlas was going to be in charge. He was going to be the head of the pack. So I found myself walking beside Eric on the Camino to Santiago. And he can't see anything. And so I found myself describing to him everything around me. And I saw things I'd never seen before. I described for him the vineyard, the vineyards that we walked past. Uh, many, many, many vineyards. And, and that they were uh, rows 10 foot apart. And the plants were 5 foot apart. And manicured around the bottom of the plants were stones that were stacked up. And how tall they were and how long they were. I described for him buildings and flowers and uh, uh, what, the, what the horizon looked like. And I saw beyond what I always looked at. 
and I saw something new. And to describe for Eric every step we took. And on the trail, I have to describe there are rocks. Uh, it's pretty rocky here. You need to move your foot about six inches this way, and two inches this way is a mud hole, and Atlas is trying to take you into, in the mud hole, which he often tried to do. Uh, there's a, there's a six inch uh, a curb that you're going to fall off if you move this away and that away. So I described for him every step we took. And Eric believed what I told him. And Eric saw Spain in his blindness. This morning, as I read the scriptures, uh, I'm thinking about uh, seeing the story from a different light. And I'm thinking about seeing, uh, uh, the story talks about seeing. And you know, the, the world says to us, uh, the world says, you get what you see. Does it not? You get what you see. Reality tells us that, that no matter what we're looking at, we're all looking at something different. No matter what you're looking at, we're all looking at something different. Psychology was tell us that uh, sometimes we only see what we want to see. Isn't that true? We really only see what we want to see. Today, I'm going to tell you, some of y'all are seeing this sanctuary from a new perspective because you didn't get here early enough to get your normal seat. <laughs> I know that for a fact. I'm, people are looking right now. I got, I got people looking at me right now going, I'm going to kill him when he gets out here. He shouldn't have said that because I'm already in trouble. Today, I hope we all see things from a different perspective because today is critically important to our faith. Incredibly important. You know, in the scriptures, uh, apparently seeing, uh, in today's text, seeing, uh, it doesn't always lead to correct belief. That's what was in the text today. Seeing doesn't always uh, lead to correct belief. Seven times in the scriptures, it announces that somebody saw something and, uh, and it led them to believe something. Usually, though, it was incorrect, what they were believing. Our text this morning talks about uh, that first dark Easter morning when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb of Jesus and she saw that the stone was rolled away and uh, she believed that somebody had stolen the body of Jesus. And the gospel of the text this morning, it doesn't even tell us that she went and looked in. It just says that when she saw the stone rolled away, that she assumed that Jesus' was, body was stolen, and so she turned and went to the disciples to tell them they have taken our Lord, and I don't know where they've taken him. She didn't even look in. Simon Peter and, and, and the one that, uh, the disciple that Jesus loved, uh, they took off running to the tomb, and apparently uh, the other disciple was faster than Peter, and he got there first. And he knelt down and he looked into the tomb and he saw the clothes that Jesus was wrapped in were laying where Jesus' body was. When Peter arrives at the tomb, he immediately just goes in. And he, he sees the, the, the linen wrappings that were on Jesus. And then the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, came into the tomb. And he saw clearer the linens that were wrapped around Jesus' body. And the scripture says, when he saw that, he believed. But what did he believe? He just knew Jesus wasn't there. He didn't know if Jesus was, had been resurrected or if somebody had stolen his body. It says he believed that Jesus wasn't there. Scriptures tell us that, that uh, uh, for they did not understand the scripture that Jesus must be raised from the dead. They didn't understand that Jesus had been raised at that point. And so what did the disciples do? They exit the tomb and they go home. Sounds like us church folks, don't it? We come to church and we, and we, we hear the message and we see the gospel proclaimed in some form or fashion and uh, we don't fully understand what we've seen or heard and what do we do on most Sundays? We can't wait to get to the restaurant. We can't wait to get home, to get to our next, agenda, uh, next appointed uh, uh, appointment. 
And uh, the disciples, they saw the empty tomb and they just went home. They wouldn't hear nothing else about them for a while. It's kind of like us. What do we see? What is what we see? How does it affect us in our faith? But the scripture tells that Mary Magdalene, the one who got there first but never looked in, said that she stood by the tomb weeping for a while. And I can only imagine she, she was there for who, who knows how long, but she was weeping when she bent down and she looked inside the tomb and she saw two angels dressed in white, one sitting at the head and one sitting at the feet where Jesus' body was. And they had a conversation, a brief conversation uh, together. And it says that, Jesus, uh, that Mary, she stood up and she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know who it was. She thought she was seeing a gardener. She didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus has this conversation with her. She doesn't recognize his voice. And, and, and Jesus says, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are, are you looking for? And Mary says, sir, if you have taken my Lord, tell me where you've taken him because I want to go and take care of him. Scripture tells us that Jesus uh, looked at her. I can only imagine it. He looked intently into her eyes and he paused for a moment and he simply says, Mary. And Mary realized that she was seeing Jesus. In that moment, she, she was seeing Jesus. He called her by name and she recognized Jesus. And Jesus says to her, Mary, go tell my brothers that, that uh, uh, I'm ascending to my Father and to your Father and to my God and to your God. And Mary took off. I'm sure it had a smile on her face, excitement and joy filled her heart, and she ran to the disciples. And the first thing she says, I've seen the Lord. And then she told them about the other stuff about, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father and, and, and my God and your God. Mary believed because she saw Jesus. At this point in the story, the disciples, they had not seen Jesus yet. But Mary told them what she had seen and what she had been told to tell them. It's just like us today. Our belief in the resurrection comes from what we, from not, not from what we've seen, but from what we have heard. For we have not seen Jesus. Not yet. We have not seen Jesus. We're just like the disciples at that point. Some of us may have seen where Jesus actually walked. Some of you may have been to the Middle East and seen the very places that Jesus walked. All of us have felt the, the presence of Christ in our lives at some point in our life. We've trusted Christ by faith because we've had to. We've had folks that we've loved that have passed away. We've had folks in, in the hospital. We've had folks, we've trusted Christ in different moments in our life. We've probably over and over again in our, in our lives placed our hope in Jesus Christ. I suspect that, that each of us in some way, some form or fashion, has experienced uh, being moved by Christ. We've had that mountaintop experience where we just were so full of faith and so full of God. We've had that. I wish, to, wish we had one today. I wish we had one every day. But the reality is we get those little gifts a handful of times in our lives when we, without a shadow of a doubt, are moved by our God and the risen Christ. But you know, the reality is we have never seen Jesus yet. And yet we believe. We believe. We wouldn't be here today if we didn't believe. We believe because we've been told about Jesus. We've been told about Jesus in Sunday school. We've been told about Jesus uh, in vacation Bible school. We've heard about Jesus in a children's message somewhere. We've been told about Jesus in youth group. You've been told from the pulpit week after week after week after week about Jesus. 
We've been told about Jesus through the scriptures, through the living, breathing word of God. We've been inspired by the Holy Spirit to, and, and as God has, re, as the Holy Spirit has revealed to us the story of the empty tomb and of the risen Christ. So why do we believe? Because we have to. Because we need to. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ within our souls. Our eternity rests on the shoulders of the empty tomb, not the stolen body of Jesus but the risen Christ from the dead. Our hope in the resurrection is the foundation of our salvation. Friends, our faith rests more in the conviction we have for the story, more than the physical evidence and the facts, the concrete facts of the story. As people of faith, we go with our hearts more than we go with our minds. For we are people that walk by faith, not by sight. That's who we are. And for some 2,000 years, uh, the story has been told over and over in people all over the world and us have become people of faith that believe in the risen Christ. Friends, just in case you hadn't heard it yet, just in case you hadn't heard it yet today, I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Death has not won, but life has won because that's God's way. May we all believe this day in the risen Christ to God's glory and for eternity's sake Amen our closing hymn this morning is I know that my Redeemer lives you know it because you've been told so stand this morning and sing the song print it in your, hymn, in your, in your bulletin as if you believe that you know that your Redeemer lives let's stand and sing beautiful Sunday together. Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Sundays. My friends, we are Easter people. We are people of faith. Our faith is based on the risen Christ and the empty tomb. So every Sunday is Easter.
We just don't always dress up. We just don't always do the pomp and circumstance. We just don't fill the house. But my friends, every Sunday is Easter. For we are loved unconditionally by God. God values us as if we were the only person on the planet. That's how much God loves you. And the empty tomb proves it. So today we celebrate who we are as people of God because of the empty tomb. I hope you enjoy your afternoon. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I hope you have a great day with family and friends. I do want to make one uh, just uh, announcement because I think it's important. Uh, Tuesday um, is Johnny Bale's 93rd birthday. And uh, look, he just dropped his head. Oh, geez. Um, so we want to say happy birthday, Johnny. If you get to the 90s, I'm going to announce it every time, okay? I just hope somebody announces mine when I'm that old. I hope I get that way, okay? I know that others have birthdays. Another one has a birthday today. And uh, so happy birthday. But I want to announce it if you're going to be 90-something. That's important to us because God is good, right, Johnny? God is good, right, Johnny? Yeah, he's over waving. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Would you now receive this benediction? Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship and community of the Holy Spirit about each of you now and forever. Amen. Mm.